Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. You know the deal. This is going to be probably pretty short. Uh, get your King James, turn to cha Revelation chapter 8. This is the continuation of the stars series. I think this is part six, but yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to make a playlist out of this anyways when I'm done. All right, Revelation 8 and verse 1. And they're talking about the seals. And uh, no, not the uh, mammals that live in the sea. But you have the seals, the vials, and the trumpets, which are judgments upon the earth. All right, so let's get going. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels, which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. So here it is, they talk about the smoke of incense. Okay. Is there a reference? Yes. Revelation 5 and verse 8. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. What are these odor, odors? Uh, they're not foul odors. They're beautiful odors. But they're, you know, smoke of incense. That's what I'm, I'm making. That's the connection I'm making here. So, all right, so, Revelation 8, 3. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And that's what the censer was. It was to burn incense. Uh, you can read about that in the book of Leviticus. That was their job, the Levites, the Levitical priesthood tribe. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayer prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with, with the prayers of saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings, and lightnings, and an earthquake. Wow. You know, when you read Revelation chapter 12, when the whole world is against the, the woman, the church, do you know the earth is going to open her mouth and help the woman? It's going to swallow up the flood of the dragon. The flood of the dragon is, um, let's just say it's the rest of the world flooding into the woman's land. Sort of like what's going on now all over Europe and the United States. Yeah. But the earth's going to open her mouth, an earthquake, so to speak, and swallow up the flood. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. It's funny. Um, some people will tell you that Paul's a false apostle. You know, Paul gives you a lot of warnings about the end times. A lot. It's no wonder they want to get rid of Paul's writings. You know, they don't want you to know about Paul's warnings for the end times. So, like I always tell people, just because you don't understand something doesn't mean it's wrong. 
You know, I mean, I don't understand brain surgery, but uh, would I tell somebody they're doing it wrong or it's wrong? I, not me, you know. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50, Paul writes to the church at Corinth, Greece, by the way. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So your flesh and blood body cannot get to heaven. Verse 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, you know, dead. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed it's pretty obvious this is talking about the resurrection for this corruptible the flesh must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so you know, this is the resurrection. They can call it the rapture all they want, but I, I prefer the word resurrection. I only use the word rapture because that's what the word everybody's used to using. But the resurrection happens at the last trump. Well, where is this last trump? Well, if I was to guess, I would say it's probably in the last book of the Bible, which is Revelation. And if there are seven trumps, seven trumpets preparing to sound, uh, I would dare say guess the seventh one is the last one, which is at the end of the tribulation. But you can't tell that to a pre-tripper. They just don't want to hear it. Verse 6, Revelation 8, verse 6. And the seven angels which had the, the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there was, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. Where do we read about that? Is there a companion verse to this? Yes, there is. The second book of the Bible, which is called Exodus. You know, you had Genesis, and then the next book is Exodus. Israel is in Egypt. God's trying to get them out. Well, <laughs> God's making a fashion statement here. God wants to take Israel out of Egypt. And Moses says, nope, ain't going to happen. Well, that's what he thinks. But uh, Exodus 9 and verse 22. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thine hand toward heaven, that there may be hail, hail, in all the land of Egypt, upon man and upon beast and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and the fire ran along upon the ground. Wow, you got hail and fire. And the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. I guess uh, the Bob translation would be that, and the Lord rained hell. You know, fire from hell, H-E-L-L. -L. Well, no, it's hail. And the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. Listen to this. So there was hail and fire, fire mingled with the hail, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. And the hail smote throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast, and the hail smote every herb of the field and break every tree of the field. Huh. Let's go back to Revelation 8 and verse 7. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire. 
just like in Egypt. Uh, the plagues of Egypt are kind of a foreshadow of the plagues in Revelation. All right, so the first angel sounded, and there was hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of trees were burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. So if the trees are burnt up, uh, how are you going to eat fruit and nuts? And if all the grass is burned up, what are the cows going to eat? And the second angel sounded, you know, second trump. And as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. Somebody that believes that all prophecy was fulfilled in 70 AD, you know, preterists, ask them where, well, I'm curious, what year was this in history? Ask them, and, and then get back with me. Let me know, because I must have missed that. Yeah. Verse 9. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. Um, just a quick thing here. Do you know which ocean is about one third of all the water on the earth? Take a guess. Uh, it's called the Pacific. The Pacific Ocean is approximately one-third of all the water that's upon the earth. So if this great mountain burning with fire was to hit the Pacific and the sea became blood and, you know, the creatures that are in the sea and two-thirds, and the I'm sorry, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and a third part of the ships were destroyed, um, that would seem to, I don't know, Pacific. All right, verse 10. And the third angel sounded, and there was a great star, star. Oh, wait, that's why I'm doing this Bible study, star and stars, right? And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called wormwood and the third part of the waters became wormwood and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter again ask uh people that think everything happened in 70 a.d when when has all this happened you see those people have to ignore the book of revelation they have to but then again when people say that everything is future they're kind of in the same boat because, you know, a lot of stuff happened in 70 AD as far as Matthew 24 and Mark 13. So, you know, all past is wrong and all future is wrong. But part was past and part is future. At least that's how I see it. Not that I have all the answers, but hey. Verse 12. And the fourth angel sounded, the fourth trump, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and a third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld, and, and I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe! Woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. All right, well, that's the end of Revelation chapter 8. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.